Today, I'm going to take you through my personal setup that I use on a daily basis. And then I'm going to hit you with a hard truth about desk setup videos that you are going to want to hear. So stay with me till the end. Welcome back to another episode of Steve's Reviews. Now, I've just realized I've been in lockdown for like two months. My hair is getting out of, out of place. My beard is getting out of order. I need to sort that out. Anyway, let's get cracking with the desk setup. And I'm going to start with the desk itself. Now, this bad boy is made from an old worktop that I found on Gumtree for about 30 quid. It's obviously from an old kitchen and decided to use that. It's 2.5 meters long and fits perfectly in the space that I've got for it. Now, the reason I went for an old kitchen desktop was because it's thick, it's solid, it's chunky, it can take a beating. And it's also quite thin, and I prefer thin desks because it allows you to have a bit more room within the space that you're working. Now for the legs, I've used two rear metal IKEA legs, and on the front, I've used two fake pedestals that I've made from IKEA rast drawers. Now, these are solid pine and pretty boring looking straight out of the box, but what they are is solid and cheap. They were 25 pounds each when I bought them. Unfortunately, they're discontinued at the moment, but what I did to these, to give you inspiration if you're interested, was I filled the holes where the knobs were, I then painted them, or used dye rather, I used Jacobean Darko wood dye on the untreated pine, and then after that I used uh, Danish oil on top. Then I attached my own library handles and it gave the appearance that I was after, kind of this Art Deco-esque old style uh, study theme, which is obviously what I like the most. So I'm really pleased how those turned out from the stock RAS drawers. The chair I'm using at the moment to sit at the desk is this, the Secret Labs Titan. Now I love this chair because it's super durable. I've had it nearly a year and a half, two years, and there's little to no signs of wear on it. And it is just overall held up. Coming from an old IKEA chair that was generic and absolutely destroyed my back, this thing has solved all of my posture problems back aches honestly it's such a fantastic chair and i've put my entire recommendations in secret labs titan chairs they are a little bit expensive but actually comparatively they're not really that expensive for something that you sit on every single day especially at the moment where a lot of people are working from home so this is the chair that i use at my desk on a daily basis now i know of you i know a few of you have watched my recent unboxing of the mavics m9 i am also testing that out and that's currently out there in the corridor just out of the way while I'm filming this but this has been part of my setup for the last two years nearly a year and a half ish I don't know however long I've had it for and I've loved it for a computer I'm using a custom one of those which is great but we're not here to talk about the computer we're simply here to talk about the setup so let's move on to what I'm using with that firstly I'm using a Satechi hub now this thing is quite ingenious because it's made to work very 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 well with the computer and in terms of aesthetics look very similar I know it's the opposite color but that's because when I bought the Satechi hub the only color they had at the time was the darker color which is fine but they make a huge amount of different hubs for different computers that make accessing the ports so much easier it puts a bunch of usb ports and more importantly a bunch of memory card slots in an accessible place for me to easily use when i'm recording footage and want to import some stuff so i absolutely love satechi hubs i did have one previously with my desktop that sat underneath it and that was just as good in fact i've got it over here this is the one that sat underneath and obviously gave you the ports and then plugged in at the back. So I absolutely love these devices and I think some of the designs that these guys do are incredible. And in fact, it's not the only Satechi item that I've got in my setup. And we'll get onto that in a minute. Plugged into the computer, I also have the Terramaster D5 300 RAID enclosure. Now, for those that don't know what RAID is, it's just a fantastic way of backing up your information and kind of storing lots and lots of data. Now, what's quite unique about this particular RAID enclosure is that two of the hard drives can work as a backup. So whenever you put anything on one of those hard drives, it backs it up to the second, which means if one of the hard drives fails, you pull it out, you put another hard drive in and it simply copies all that data back over. 
I can also use these two hard drives as well as a combined hard drive. So let's say I put two one terabyte hard drives in, it can combine them into one single two terabyte hard drive. So that's pretty cool, but it also has three extra bays for separate hard drives. Now this is just awesome because it means that I can have tons and tons and tons of data storage. In there at the moment is a selection of very, very cheap Western digital blue hard drives, two terabyte, and they're there just as a physical form of my online storage. So what I do with things like my Dropbox is I have that as a physical storage on my hard drive so that I can access and drag and drop and make things a lot easier for myself. I don't need that, but it's nice to have it just in case the Dropbox, for example, failed. I'll always have a physical version of that on that hard drive. But also in there, I use a crucial SSD to edit from. Now this is ideal because it means it's got fast data transfer speeds and I have no issue editing 4K off that. I think eventually I'll probably move over to SSD for every single one of those hard drives, but that is an expense at this moment in time that I just can't afford. Now for the monitor, I use this, a Samsung ultra wide monitor. Now the name of this monitor, I'm gonna have to read off my phone. It is a LS34J552WQU-XEM 34 inch ultra wide LED monitor. Because that is the most memorable name that Samsung could obviously think of for its ultra wide monitor. But I've gone for this particular option almost as a bit of a temporary stopgap. Now, this hasn't got the best resolution ever. Unfortunately, it's not 4K. It is 1440p, so it's higher resolution than HD. And that does fine for me for now. But I love having a wide screen. Now, I used to have a dual monitor setup and I just got sick to death with how it looked. It just looked messy. Then again, I didn't have it mounted on, on monitor arms, which I'll talk about in a second. But at the end of the day, I just kind of got sick of this big gap in between the two monitors and wanted something that was wide, simple, and looked good. Now, I could have gone for wider. I could have gone for a curved monitor. But the reason I went for a flat one was simply because when you're designing, when you're editing, when you're doing anything that you're going to be showing to other people, you want to make it so they view it the same as you've seen it. Now, when you're editing on a curved screen, that could affect your perception, even just a small amount of how something looks. Most people will be looking at something on their phones or on their computers, which most are flat. So really, you want to be editing in a similar way. And that was my thought process about getting an ultra-wide flat rather than a curved. Overall, I'm really happy with how it looks with just one screen. But another cool thing about it is the price. This thing only comes to 350 quid, which is actually a lot cheaper than what I thought this would be at, especially for a 1440p monitor. Yes, I know there are higher options, and I will talk about that in a little bit, but there are a lot more money. So this is a great price for a great monitor. Could be a bit sharper, but it'll do for now. The monitor is sat on a simple arm that I found on Amazon for about 20 quid. It wasn't very expensive at all. It does the job quite nicely, allows me to attach it to the desk and keep it out of the way. And it just means that your desk is free from any kind of stands or anything like that. It just means that you are able to work with a bit more space on your desk. It also allows you to pull the monitor out and swivel it around, which is quite nice. The only thing I don't really like about this arm is that the cabling isn't internal. But you can't have everything. So the gadgets that I actually use to control the computer. First of all, I use the Satechi. This is where they're coming up a second time in my setup, the Satechi Slim X1. Now, I really like the design of this thing. It's small, it's sleek, and it's very, very derivative of the sort of stock keyboards that you might see with a computer that I have. There are a few key differences though. First of all, this can pair up to three different computers at any one time. You can switch between the inputs at ease using the keyboard, but also it's backlit. Now I think this is cool. It actually looks really, really nice, which is one of the reasons I've got it plugged in at all times so that I can use it with that full brightness on and make it look pretty cool at all times. It's only white as well, unfortunately. It's not full RGB, but you can turn this backlight off if you want to, which makes the battery life last.
last even longer. But overall, I really like this keyboard, and again, another sterling design from Satechi. Next up is the Logitech MX Master 1 Limited Edition. Now, I know a lot of content creators who use the MX Master and kind of swear by it because they're living on their computers all of the time. But they all use the MX Master 3, and I can't really tell you why I went for the MX Master 1, other than the fact it was a bit cheaper and I didn't really see that much of a difference. And I'm glad I went for this one because it has been a fantastic mouse. It's got tons of customizability. The software is pretty cool and you can pretty much program any of the buttons to do whatever you want. You've got a switcher button here that changes it from kind of a clickable scroll wheel to a smooth scroll wheel. And also you've got hidden buttons such as in the textured pad on the bottom. I just love this mouse and I think it is fantastic. And for anyone who wants to use computers a lot, then that is a really ergonomic option for you. Now I know not everyone finds it very comfortable. It is quite large, but I think for a lot of people, this is a really good ergonomic option. Now there is one other thing that I use to control my setup and this is really my secret sauce. The absolute icing on the cake for me and the thing that makes productivity go through the roof and it is this my custom magic force number pad the stews reviews green enter key this thing is awesome it uses gator on blue switches and standard keycaps again which i've customized myself but the reason i use this is as a hot keyboard for editing in final cut pro now that's the software that i use to make all of my episodes and what i've done is i've made my own key map with a bunch of different stuff that I do on a regular basis at just one press away. So for example, rather than copying and pressing Command C and then to paste Command V, it's just one button. I press one button to copy, one button to paste. To switch a tool rather than pressing Command A or Command whatever, I can just press one button again to keep switching tools. I can press one button to zoom in, one button to zoom out, one button to play, to pause, to add a note. There's all this sort of functionality programmed into this through the key mapping function. And this makes my productivity so much better than it ever has been. Honest to God, this thing is awesome. And it means I can just use it with one hand as well whilst using the other hand on the mouse. There are occasions that I have to go back to using the other keyboard, for example, if I'm typing something in a note, or there's a very particular shortcut that requires lots of different things, but it's very, very rare. I would say that 99% of the time, my hand can stay on that, and I just need to do this to edit. It's fantastic, and anybody who edits regularly on Final Cut Pro needs a number pad. Now, if you are interested in my key mapping, my custom key mapping for number pads and editing, then it is available for my patrons very soon. It's not available just yet, but it will be all patrons. So if you want to get access to that map, all you have to do is join me on Patreon. Underneath these, I use a simple kind of green map that was on Amazon as like a fake kind of leather. I don't really like it that much. Much, and I think I'll be getting rid of it pretty soon for something else. I don't know, maybe something that matches more like the Stu's Reviews desk with the kind of gold inlay. I don't know, if anyone's got any recommendations for decent mouse mats or desk mats, let me know in the comments. But at the moment, it serves its purpose very well. Now, all of this is lit by this thing, the BenQ light bar. This is integral to my setup. Now, actually, in truth, I was sent this for review maybe about three years ago. It was one of the very, very first things that I was ever sent. But I can tell you now, this is one of the things that if it broke, I would buy one immediately because it has absolutely changed the way I work and the way I do stuff. It adds an awesome, even light onto my desk that I just use all of the time, whether I'm writing or drawing something or planning something or maybe taking apart a controller to repair it or anything, literally anything, this thing offers such a good even light. It has been absolutely invaluable. And it does it in such a way that it doesn't glare off the screen when you're sat in front of it. It's also got a color temperature to it that automatically changes depending on your environment. It's got a brightness level that you can change and it does it automatically as well. All the touch buttons at the top do this. It's just fantastic. I think it is a bit pricey. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, about 80 quid or something, but 
That has been one of the coolest gadgets I've ever received that I use on a daily basis. And it's not the prettiest of thing. I mean, look at it. It really isn't that pretty at all. But it is very, very functional. And this is one of those rare cases where you kind of think, hmm... I think the function is more important than the aesthetic, so I'm gonna take a little hit in the aesthetic department and keep it there. This isn't the only lighting I use on my desk. As you can see, there is something behind me that's glowing a little bit. Now you might recognize those or that. That is the IKEA Symphonisk lamp that I reviewed nearly two years ago. Now these things are incredible. Now a few of you will have spotted actually that the one I reviewed was white. That is not, that is black. That is because I returned the white one and decided to go for black because it suited the room a little bit more than white and white stood out in the thumbnail. So that went back and I got a black one and I loved it that much I actually bought a second one because you can pair them up in stereo sound and my god it's incredible. These things are some of the weirdest looking speakers that I've ever had but also the best sounding speakers I've ever used. They have some little problems, like you can't use any 3.5mm audio, it's got no inputs on there other than through the Wi-Fi. There's no Bluetooth, for example, as well, which is a bit of an issue for some people, but if you're okay overlooking some of the shortcomings of these speakers, you will be super, super happy, because obviously they're not just speakers, they're lamps as well. These things are lamps. It's just absolutely crazy but they are a collaboration between Ikea and Sonos, and what can I say, I still love these nearly two years on. Now inside these, I've used two smart bulbs. They are the Avatar smart bulbs I found on Amazon. Now, there is one particular good reason that I went for these smart bulbs and these alone. First of all, they don't need a hub, but the main reason I went for is that they are really, really bad at displaying yellow. Now, I know you're probably thinking, why would you pick purposefully smart bulbs that are really bad at portraying yellow? In fact, that at the moment is set to yellow. I've asked the Echo system to display yellow on these, and that's what it's come up with. It's terrible, it is terrible, and the reviews even say as such. But the reason I went for these is because they are really, really good at being green. Really good. Watch this. Turn desk to green. Okay. Like that's green. That's so green. Now normally smart bulbs don't really have a brilliant green hue. They normally have a kind of yellowy hue like you just saw a minute ago. Turn desk yellow. Okay. That's normally the hue you get when you ask for green smart bulbs. But the fact that these have awesome green, that's why I really, really like them. It's very, very rare that I use yellow. But in fact, I mean, they can go a normal color if I just ask them to go white or warm. They go a warmish yellow color, but you're kind of missing that yellow, that real yellow. Instead, it goes green. Thinking about it, I'm sure there are some smart bulbs out there that do a really good job at all the hues, but those are the ones that I found that had a, such a deep green that for me, it suits perfectly. The Symphonisk lamps and the smart bulbs are paired up to this, the Amazon Echo Dot fourth generation. Now, I don't particularly like the look of them, as I've said in my review of the fourth gen Echo Dots, but they've grown on me a little bit over time, and I don't mind so much now the appearance of them. A couple of people, though, in that review said why I didn't pick up on the fact that it had a white cable coming out of a black unit. Now, that didn't bother me that much. And the reason it doesn't bother me is because who the hell has black walls? At the end of the day, if you're trailing a cable down a wall and you don't want it to be obvious, you're gonna want it to be a lighter color because the most part, most people have white walls. I know not everyone does, some people have different colors. I mean, there's a couple of walls in my house that aren't white, but most of my walls are white. And I would say if we did a survey, a huge percentage of us here right now probably have white walls or lighter colored walls and white cabling shows up less if you're just dangling it down. You're lazy with cable management like I am. And there's the key point. If you're lazy with cable management, having a white cable makes things much easier if you've got white walls, but nobody has black walls. I'm sure one of you right now has a black wall. I'm getting myself into trouble. We're gonna move on. I'm digging a hole. We're moving on. 
Next up is the audio. Now I use two different devices for this. I use one, the Razer Kraken Kitty Edition headphones. Now these are awesome, but they are wired via USB, so not ideal. They do come in pink in a wireless version, which is cool, but pink just isn't my thing, especially when everything else is black and green. Just wouldn't really suit that setup. Now a few of you have mentioned why I use Kitty Ear headphones. And to tell you the truth, I don't know the answer. They are reactive, so they flash different colours when someone subs or follows to you on Twitch, which is pretty cool and gives a bit of an interactive element to my streams when I do them. But also, maybe I wear them because it's a bit ironic. Or maybe I wear them for a bit of a laugh and to give you guys a bit of a chuckle when I come on stream. Or maybe, maybe, just maybe, the real reason I wear them is simply because... I am the hottest e-girl that you know and watch. And you know that's true. For speakers, I currently use the Bose Companion 20s. Now I've had these for quite some time, probably nearly 10 years. I would say, and they've been phenomenal. Such great sounding speakers for music, for media. There are a couple of downsides to it, such as the fact there's a million, million cables because they're operated via this kind of little touchpad thing that also has a little dial that changes the volume, which is nice, it's pretty cool, but it does mean, like I said, lots and lots of millions and millions of cables. But if you can look past that, actually aesthetically, they're really pretty nice looking speakers and they sound phenomenal, as most stuff from Bose does these days. Except their glasses, which weren't that good. The biggest problem with using these, however, is the fact that they aren't really flat. And by flat, I mean they've got a bit of equalization to them to make them sound the way they sound. Now, if you're doing editing like I do, sometimes that is not necessarily ideal because I can't hear what it sounds like as a flat sound. I can't change the equalization that well of the stuff that I'm editing. So if you're doing a lot of editing, I would look for something a little bit more flat the sound so that you can get a complete basic picture of what your audio sounds like without having the equalization of the speakers affecting that but for now they're okay that's audio output but what about input now at the moment i'm using the fifine k690 uh, microphone which is a really respectable microphone actually and this was one i was sent recently in an unboxing and i thought actually i'd use it and test it out properly and i really actually think it's a phenomenal little piece of kit now that's not one what i'm recording the audio on at the moment this is the fifine as you can see just here and sort of sits back over there i'm actually using the yeti blue here just in front of me now i've used the yeti blue for years and years and years and years ever since i started doing youtube and i love the yeti blue it's a fantastic mic and does a great job with my voice and kind of just sounds nice overall but i've only got one of them and it's annoying having to unscrew it and take it apart and put it back on the kind of mount every time I want to use it. So I'm deciding at the moment just to try something else to see if it works. If it doesn't work out, I think I'll probably be looking at buying a second Yeti Blue microphone simply based on the fact that it's what I know and it's what I love and it is what I've used for years and years and years that has really only been used in the last couple of episodes. Now attached to that is a Yeti arm, the Yeti mic arm, which is needlessly expensive. It's a stupid price. It's about 90 quid, I think, off the top of my head but it is balanced perfectly to work with the Yeti Blue. So it's weight and kind of the way it works is designed to work hand in hand. It seems to work fine with the Fifine K690 as well, but I just like the look of it because it can hide all the cables down the actual arm itself using little clips. And yeah, what can I say? It's, you know, a brand thing. You have a Yeti mic, you might as well get a Yeti arm. Obviously there are loads of cheaper options that work just as well, but I think I got it on offer. I think that's why I bought it. I'm sure I got it on offer for about 40 quid when I bought it. But that's what I use if you're interested in the mic arm. Now, the last two little items that are on my desk all of the time at the moment are one, the Spiegel wireless charger. If you can see that just here, this is pretty cool because it's, it allows me to prop my phone up in such a way that I can see notifications when it comes in and I can use it 
for things like shortcuts that I use connected to my Mac. It's just ideal. It's also a pretty fast charger as well. Wireless, simply pop it on and it's good to go. Again, these aren't the cheapest, but they are really useful. And I stand by speaking stuff with you speaking cases and speaking um, chargers for a long time. And I think generally speaking, they're fantastic. And I haven't had anything fail from them just yet. So that is what I use to charge my devices on the desk. And the last thing is the Xbox Series S. Now, you've seen my review of that very recently, so I don't need to talk too much about it, but that is connected to this display and just means I've got access to playing some games here at the desk whenever I feel like relaxing and playing a game of Warzone. Now, I do want to use something like the Series S or maybe my PS5 connected to all this in the future as a form of streaming setup, but that's not going to be coming until I've moved studio. So again, stay tuned for that. Now, all of this, how much does all of this cost, the whole setup? Well, let's run through the pricing of everything I've just told you about. The desktop was about 50 quid. The rasp drawers and the dye, oil and handles was about 80 pounds for the both. The Secret Labs Titan 379, custom computer around 1299. The monitor was 349 pounds and 99 pence and don't ask me to repeat its name. The BenQ light bar about 100 pounds. The Avatar smart bulbs 25 quid. The Satechi hub 75. The Bose Companion 20. These were about £200 when I first bought them. The IKEA Symphonisk was £150, and then I bought another IKEA Symphonisk at £150. We have the Huanuaowu Monitor Stand Arm, which is £20. The Yeti Mic Arm, which is £109.99. The Feefine K690 Mic is £90. The Xbox Series S is £249. The Razer Kraken Kitty, 150. The Amazon Echo Dot was 50 pounds. The Spigen Wireless Charger, 50 pounds. Magic Force Number Bad, 30 quid. Although I did spend a little bit more buying some custom keycaps for it, which cost me 10 pounds, roughly. The Satechi Slim X1 keyboard is about 50 quid. The Logitech MX Master, 65. The TerraMaster RAID enclosure was about 200 pounds. And inside that we have the Crucial BX500 two terabyte, which cost me about 185 pounds. And three Western Digital Blue two terabyte hard drives to a total of 150 pounds. And I'm pretty certain that's everything. The total comes to 4,265 pounds and 98 pence, approximately. I know a few of you now are probably thinking, Jesus, how much has he spent? That is a ridiculous figure. I mean, I know it's not the most expensive setup that you've probably watched on YouTube, but it is still quite a high figure. The thing to remember though, is that I spent a long time building this setup. It's taken me nearly 10 years. I'd say is the earliest possible thing on this desk is the Bose Companion 20s, which was 10 years ago when I purchased these. So I have built it up over a long period of time. I know a couple of you as well will probably be thinking, oh, he's probably been sent all that, so you know he's able to have all this. But actually, that's wrong as well. Only three items on this desk have been sent to me. That is the BenQ light bar, the Spigen wireless charger, and the Fifine K690. They're the only things that I've been sent. The rest of it I've purchased with my own cash. But now, anyway, let's move on from that. If you do want to check out any of these items, I will leave a link in the description below to every single one of them so you can check them out for yourself but I think it's time now I hit you with what I promised at the very very beginning some very very hard truths about every single desk setup video on YouTube or the majority of them anyway and the truth is everything I've just shown you including this desk behind me right now is a lie and I would guarantee that let's pull a figure out there 80% of all desk setup videos you watch or a lie. And that is because this desk on a daily basis looks nothing like this. Let me show you something. It's not fair of me to come on here and show you my desk setup without actually showing you my real desk setup. In the place of nice, neat, OCD soothing aesthetic, my desk is often home to chaos. 
piles of miscellaneous items are often to be found alongside the odd empty beer can from a long night of editing, or maybe one or two empty mugs from the hideous amounts of tea that I drink. I'm showing you my real desk setup because I'm sick of every content creator showing their so-called desk setups when it's likely that 9 out of 10 of these people have desk setups that look like mine the majority of the time. It's super unhealthy for these people to show off their setups like they haven't just taken six cans of Mr. Sheen to it. It's like looking in a health magazine and thinking it's perfectly normal to look like a well-oiled Greek god, when in fact it's just not achievable for the majority of us. So I don't know who needs to hear this, but I want you to take a look at the pile of detritus on your desk. Look at how perfect it is. That is the sign of a busy mind, and I think it looks perfect the way it is. Thing is, I just don't believe it. I just don't believe all these desk setup videos from content creators showing their sleek designs and clean setups. It's just not real. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm really messy. Maybe I'm the messiest tech reviewer ever. But I genuinely don't think that's the case because either these guys have too much time on their hands or they're paying someone to clean their desk on a regular basis or what I think is the truth, they simply clean it up for these videos. But I wanted to open the curtains for you guys to see behind it and see a bit more about me and how I personally have my desk set up. Now I know a few of you will be triggered by what I've just shown you. And you probably do have very clean desks, the people that I've triggered. And like I said, I envy the fact that you've got the time and organization skills to keep your desk tidy. But I just move from project to project so quickly, I just don't have time to clean up behind myself after every single task. To me, that's a waste of time and my productivity would drop. What I tend to do is keep piling it up until my productivity drops because I can't find something that I know is on the desk and I've looked for half an hour and it's not there. That is when I blitz it. But that's all from me, guys. I hope you've enjoyed seeing behind the curtain and I hope you agree with me and I hope you've liked actually me being honest with you and showing you what a real desk setup actually looks like on a daily basis. But other than that, guys, thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you back for another episode of Studio Reviews soon.